very small subsection of Australia's population of 26 million that's actually getting hit hard right now. Yeah, and that's the problem with that's the problem with monetary policy that the Reserve Bank manages. It's not the Reserve Bank's fault. That's the mandate they got. They got no. They have no other weapon or weaponry other than interest rates to fight inflation, which is their goal: fix inflation. Few people are as synonymous with the home loan caper as Mark Burris. The chairman of Yellow Brick Road is adamant that everyday Australians are being unfairly punished for high inflation, which he believes can be blamed on poor decisions by governments at state and federal levels, as well as the Reserve Bank. Milton Friedman, one of the most famous economists of all time, said in the 80s and 90s, consumers are not responsible for inflation, governments are. If I load you up with a whole lot of cash that you didn't earn, as we did during the COVID period, and I encourage banks to lend you money at 2% by giving them money very, very cheap. You do not feel in any way guilty about spending it. No wonder they go and overbid because they're bidding with money they didn't earn. What bothers me is the Reserve Bank should know this, this psychological analysis or profiling of people who borrow money. The government should know this. Independent research is sort of saying that South West Sydney is going to be hit the hardest when it comes to reductions in prices, when it comes to house prices, and also this is where the independent research is expecting to see the most distress amongst mortgage holders. Everyone agrees we have a problem right now, but there's little consensus on how we fix it. For Mark Burris, the squeeze on interest rates is bound to result in not just mortgage stress, but also job losses. So what do you think is more problematic, higher interest rates or higher inflation? For me, I think right now, the higher interest rates is a problem. He says the dependence on interest rates as a cure-all for our economic issues is an outdated approach, and for now, Australia needs to stop panicking about inflation. So you think we've just got to learn to live with a bit higher inflation? For the short term, yeah, because we have extraordinary circumstances. We've got a war, we've had floods, we've had droughts, we've had supply chain issues, we had China's closed down for a period of time because of its COVID policy. A lot of stuff that we import comes from those places. We also import inflation from the US and Europe. These very extraordinary periods. So we're using 1990s policy but we've got a 2023 situation. 100%. And now, after more than 30 straight years of economic growth, the fear is we could, once again, go into recession. Finance guru Mark Burris thinks it's a real possibility and warns some other experts actually believe that would be the quickest way to crush inflation. 1990s was the recession we had to have. Do we need a recession? Sometimes, they want to shock people out of their spending habits. Now, no Reserve Bank governor is ever going to say that, no Treasurer is ever going to say that. Paul Keating said it, but look what it did with Paul. It's, he ended up losing an election because he said it and the media just jumped all over him. How do we stop someone who's got money on deposit? How do we stop them from spending money? How do we stop them from spending? Well, how do you? You shock them with a recession. You make them think, whoa, a recession, hang on, what's going on here? Um, maybe we better stop spending a little bit because something could happen. 